Welcome to Mystic Realms Recap. Links are in the description below. Please show some love of the author and me. On to the show, however, when Lindley walked towards the tower, he suddenly saw a figure jumping out of an exit, not far away. Master Cheyenne, you, Lindley stared at the pillar of the Malfa family, unable to believe how disheveled Cheyenne looked. His robe was stained, and his hair was all over the place too. The jewel of the staff in his hand had become dim and colorless. He looked as if he had just fought a fierce battle that made him even more disheveled and pathetic than he already had been when besieged by the green dragons. Could it be that the dark blade had already attacked Cheyenne? After seeing that Linley was the one who was talking, he smiled bitterly, and said, Mage Felic, when did you arrive? Did you encounter anything on the road? Linley was a little confused, for he initially thought that Cheyenne had been attacked by the Dark Blade, but it didn't seem to be the case when he heard what Cheyenne said. Encounter anything? No. Weren't you with the rest? The entire Sky Castle had become a dead city. Since it was not the Dark Blade that attacked Cheyenne, the latter should not have been forced into such dire straits even if he had touched the magic gears accidentally. Moreover, it seemed obvious that Cheyenne was not hurt by any magic gears. Judging from the magical waves and the dimmed staff, there had clearly been a tough battle. Cheyenne looked around and found that Lin Li's group and he were the only ones there. While he was fixing his appearance, he fearfully said, I don't know what went wrong with that teleportation portal. Ever since I got transported here, I haven't seen anyone else. As for what I look like, you may not believe it, but it's because I encountered a group of vengeful spirits. Vengeful spirits? Linley did not quite believe it. Vengeful spirits were relatively common among undead creatures. Although they were nearly immune to physical attacks, they were inherently afraid of light and magic. Besides, Cheyenne was a bona fide legendary mage. Even if he had really encountered a group of vengeful spirits, he wouldn't have become so disheveled. Even ordinary archmages would be in a better state as long as they were careful enough. Cheyenne shook his head, and helplessly said, Even I don't quite believe it myself now. I don't know who designed this sky castle. When I'm walking along these streets, I seem to stray further and further away. I was just about to fly directly over those buildings, but I got attacked by a group of vengeful spirits. If they were ordinary, they would definitely be easy to deal with. However, there were actually some that had actual form. After hearing Cheyenne's explanation, Linley could not help but be surprised and glad that he didn't fly around just now. The vengeful spirits were incorporeal existences, hence, they were immune to physical attacks. However, being an undead creature without substance would cause them to be restrained by the holy light that had purification effects. Even the sun, fire, and ubiquitous environments caused irreversible damage to the vengeful spirits. In reality, many of the newly formed vengeful spirits were destroyed by sun and fire. Vengeful spirits and skeletal warriors were the existences of the lowest level amongst undead creatures. Their promotion processes were also the most difficult. That was how the skeletal lord of the Shadow Glen could take Anril by storm when he advanced in level. It was not just a matter of luck. To a certain extent, it could even be described as a miracle. All factors were indispensable. It would be no exaggeration to say that the probability of a vengeful spirit forming a physical body was almost the same as that of walking in the street and being killed by a meteor. Cheyenne was really unhappy. When a vengeful spirit almost became a physical entity, it would be almost legendary. Linley truly sympathized with Cheyenne. While replenishing the mana in his staff, Cheyenne worriedly said, Terrible. At least two of the vengeful spirits that surrounded me just now had legendary power, and the other vengeful spirits were terrifying too. Had I not been a little lucky, I would probably have been in greater trouble. Linley was again shocked and thankful for his decision not to fly around. Vengeful spirits were made up of vengefulness, and their existences were incorporeal. That was the very reason they could be almost immune to physical attacks. However, nothing was perfect in this world. Apart from the fact that they could be restrained and purified by holy light, other magic would deal great damage to them too. In such circumstances, there would be no difference between vengeful spirits, 
be it the level 10 or level 15 ones. Only when vengeful spirits reached the legendary realm would they be able to turn all of their vengefulness into substance and gain high resistance to magic. However, it was this incorporeal form of vengeful spirits that made them experience great difficulty in improving their strength. The most important source of power for undead creatures was the soul fire that souls transformed into after death. Hence, the undead creatures had a way to enhance their strength, and that was to devour the soul fire of other undead creatures. The vengeful spirits naturally did not have soul fire. They couldn't enhance their strength by accumulating power or devouring the fire of other souls. In fact, even as time went by, their vengefulness would gradually fade, and they would also become weaker. In that case, how could they reach the legendary level and become a corporeal entity? Even when Linley was in the Endless World, he had never met any vengeful spirits with a physical form, though he had encountered plenty of vengeful spirits. If vengeful spirits really have a physical form, it would mean that they are nearing the legendary realm, Linley said in disbelief. While replenishing the mana in his staff, Cheyenne nodded, and said, Yeah, two of the vengeful spirits that were attacking me indeed had legendary power that was far beyond that of ordinary vengeful spirits. Linley could not help but sympathize after hearing Cheyenne say that there was really a legendary vengeful spirit. Vengeful spirits below the legendary realm were all easy to deal with, but legendary ones were much more difficult. The legendary vengeful spirits which could change arbitrarily between corporeal and incorporeal world without fearing magic were definitely one of the trickiest undead creatures to deal with in the world. Even in legends, the stronger vengeful spirits would basically be undead lords. Cheyenne obviously noticed the look of sympathy in Lin Li's eyes, but what else could he say about his bad luck? He glanced back at the street which he came out of, and said with a tinge of joy in his tone, it's okay to deal with other vengeful spirits, but the two legendary vengeful spirits were especially tough to deal with. I can't even deal with them, despite putting in all of my effort. I don't know if I'm lucky or not. Fortunately, they seem to have been restrained in one domain, thus giving me a chance to shake them off. The vengeful spirits were confined to one domain. Linley was rather shocked. In fact, he had already begun considering and thinking about the origins of the vengeful spirits when Cheyenne started talking about them. Legendary vengeful spirits with physical form would never appear. Besides, the Sky Castle had already been in the crack of time and space for so long. The duration of more than 1,300 years would be enough to let any vengefulness dissipate over time, let alone bring about a legendary vengeful spirit. The High Elves were born at the Tree of Eternity, and their souls returned to the Tree of Eternity after death, thus making them fearless. In fact, they would never carry any vengefulness during their deaths, hence, they would never become vengeful spirits. However, with the defeat of the High Elves during the War in the Dark Age, not only did they lose their supremacy, the High Elven Queen had also been killed together with the destruction of the Tree of Eternity. In this case, it would be impossible for them not to bear any grudge, hence, it wouldn't be strange for them to become vengeful spirits. But what did the confinement of the vengeful spirits in a domain signify? In Lin Li's opinion, there was a great likelihood that those grudges and vengefulness were integrated with a certain setting of the Sky Castle. In other words, those powerful vengeful spirits were part of the Sky Castle. Although the conquering Mageweth had not been activated, it could still gain strength from the Sky Castle. At that time, the High Elves, who were already at the end of their lives, chose to betray their glory and instead study necromagic, which they'd once hated. The former masters of Norfeller and the legendary Lich from the Scar of Death were all High Elves who had lived in Amril and secretly studied necromagic. Although they all made it seem like they were studying secretly either in the catacombs or in the mountains, no one knew if the High Elves weren't just all studying necromagic. The incredible talent of High Elves was well known. Even the various races ruled by the High Elves had no choice but to admit that the High Elves were born to learn magic. Necromagic was just another type of magic, hence, it was a piece of cake for the High Elves to learn. The only difficulty they had to overcome was their fear of filth. Linley himself had been in contact with the High Elves who studied necromagic. They were lunatics who would do everything to the extreme, 
but they did have the ability to be like that. The two elven legendary liches were just ordinary high elves who were secretly studying necromagic, but what about the sky castle? There were still vengeful spirits in this sky castle that had been missing for more than 1,300 years. Hence, Linley had no choice but to change his mindset. From Linley's perspective, the sky castle had long become a dead city even though it had been built by the power of all the high elves. The so-called defensive power was probably just the magic gears and booby traps. Although the skills of the high elves had reached the peak level of that era in all aspects, Linley was not a pushover, either. It would not be tough for him to deal with the magic gears. In fact, the encounters along the way from the teleportation to the arrival in the tower in the center of the sky castle proved that Linley was not being overconfident. He saw all sorts of intelligently designed magic gears, which were brutal and wicked. Although this did not allow him to let his guard down, he did feel like he was in control of everything. But now, the emergence of the legendary vengeful spirit made Linley re-evaluate the sky castle. Although he had yet to encounter any legendary vengeful spirits along the way, he was sure that he would see more than just magic gears when he entered the tower. Upon sight of Linley's expression, Cheyenne waited quietly without uttering a single word even though he had already done what was necessary. He knew clearly that the elves seemed to be the strongest of the four parties and that the dark blade only fell shortly behind, but no one knew the sky castle better than Linley did. Master Cheyenne, the appearance of those two legendary vengeful spirits, Linley asked Cheyenne who was waiting after he recovered from the shock. They seemed to be high elves. The bodies of the other vengeful spirits were not very solid, so their silhouettes were also very vague. Noticing that Linley had merely nodded, Cheyenne hesitated for a moment before asking, Mage Felic, what do you plan to do next? This sky castle is designed like a huge labyrinth. Even if you have a map, you might encounter other beings. Linley smiled when he heard Cheyenne's words. It was obvious that Cheyenne had suffered because of the legendary vengeful spirits but he was too embarrassed to directly follow Linley. He looked up at the tower in the center of the square, and honestly said, Master Cheyenne, do you see that tower? According to my speculation, the tower should be the one that controls the entire sky castle. If you don't mind, let's go take a look together. Cheyenne turned to look at the huge tower in the center of the square that was so opulent that it could not go unnoticed. Although Linley did not have concrete evidence, he could also guess based on the size and location of the tower that it should have a very important role in the sky castle. Therefore, after teleporting here, Cheyenne also regarded the tower as his goal. As he delved deeper, he even felt an urge to fly past the buildings and go to the tower. However, Cheyenne did not come here aiming for the control center. He simply felt that there could be the immortal king's treasure or the relics of the high elves in the tower that was in the middle of the city. Although the tower was not the only one in the sky castle, anyone with brains would think that being the one in the middle often meant that it was the most important. After hearing Cheyenne's encounter, Linley began to keep his guard up against the sky castle. Hence, he did not hide anything regarding the tower being the control center of the sky castle, although Linley now had by his side the vampire Norfeller, who had just reached level 21, Lichedge Felusi who was at the peak of level 22 and two legendary humorous WYRMS, Linley still had no confidence in his power, and was not certain that he could cope with what he might encounter next. Especially after meeting Cheyenne again and realizing that it was likely that the psychotic high elves had all studied necromagic and even applied it on the sky castle, Linley felt the need to have more competent assistance. Although Cheyenne got harmed by the legendary vengeful spirits, that did not mean that he was particularly weak. If Linley had been in his place instead, he would probably have been unable to withstand the attacks of the vengeful spirits more easily than Cheyenne. However, Linley merely talked about the central tower, but did not give any explanation about the labyrinth-like streets Cheyenne had mentioned subtly. The conquering mageweth was considered one of the top-level mageweths even amongst guru-level mageweths. Perhaps only a few high elves knew about it. Although Cheyenne was the closest to Linley in this cooperation, their bond wasn't strong enough for him to really come clean about everything. Although Cheyenne found the maze to be very strange, he did not continue probing when he noticed that Linley didn't seem too keen about talking about it. 
In his opinion, it was probably just some magic gears or booby traps. Since he had already barged in, there was no need to look further into it. In fact, Cheyenne was now the weakest amongst the several forces, and the only trusted ally of his was Lin Li and the Tower of Dusk. On the surface, he seemed to have accepted Lin Li's invitation calmly, but he was in fact more than happy. Hence, despite knowing that Lin Li was hiding something, he decided not to probe any further for fear that he would lose his ally. The group arrived in front of the central tower, and Lin Li stopped in his tracks all of a sudden. Staring at the seemingly ordinary door, his forehead gradually creased into a frown. Mage Felic, is there some sort of mage weapon on this door? Cheyenne looked at the tightly shut doors and the two complicated magewets that made him feel a little dizzy. Although he could guess that this might be the magic lock of the tower, he did not study magewets in detail and couldn't see what it was. Linley hesitated for a moment before Riley saying, If I'm not wrong, it should be the legendary magical thousand contraption lock. The magical thousand contraption lock. Cheyenne's face grew sullen immediately. The legendary magical thousand contraption lock could not be deciphered even by the gods. Perhaps the legends might be exaggerated, but he no longer had the elite bandits along with him to open the lock. Perhaps the legendary realm bandit Lansdale from the Dark Blade would have the means to do so, though. If Linley knew what Cheyenne was thinking, he would definitely tell him that even the ancestor of Lansdale would never be able to unlock the magical thousand contraption lock unless he had the real key let alone Lansdale. That was how precise it was. Even the person who had set up the magical thousand contraption lock would not be able to open it without the key. After Linley arrived in Anril, he had seen the magical thousand contraption lock several times before, including one time in the underground vault of time consignment store. However, even though the magical thousand contraption lock in the time consignment store was clearly inferior, it still required more than 100 keys and a special maneuvering technique to be unlocked. Based on Linley's experience, he deduced that the magical thousand contraption lock in the door might really require at least 1,000 keys and countless methods for it to be unlocked safely. It was not an exaggeration at all. Those who didn't know the right maneuvering techniques would never be able to unlock it. Everyone knew that there were rules to follow, be it with an ordinary lock or a magic lock. In order to unlock a lock, finding the rules would be akin to finding the key, for the next step would be to find a replacement for the key. However, there were countless permutations within the magical thousand contraption lock, and even the gods couldn't calculate them all. Mage Felic, is there really no solution? Cheyenne asked, refusing to submit to fate. Linley smiled bitterly, and said, if it was another magical thousand contraption lock, I could try unlocking it but there's no need to try with this one. Not only was there no solution, Linley wouldn't dare to try it even if he had one. They were not in the underground vault of the time consignment store, but in the sky castle of the high elves. The attack of the magical thousand contraption lock triggered by an attempt would definitely be massive. If he were to try it recklessly, it would be akin to suicide. Although the way to the central tower was blocked by the unbreakable magical thousand contraption lock, Linley and Cheyenne both refused to resign to fate. Linley slowly walked along the bottom of the tower while scrutinizing it in hopes of finding a breakthrough. When they got all the way to the back of the tower, Linley raised his head and looked up, only to see an open terrace on the second floor of the tower. Is there access to the interior of the tower? Seeing that Lin stood still, Cheyenne looked up. He couldn't believe his eyes at all. Could this be possible? There was an unbreakable magical thousand contraption lock in front and a huge hole at the back. Linley didn't believe that there would be such a good thing. The high elves were not idiots. Since the front door was deadlocked, how could entry be granted at the back door? Needless to say, the terrace was definitely no less dangerous than the magical thousand contraption lock in the front. At least the magical thousand contraption lock wouldn't be dangerous as long as it wasn't touched. However, the terrace was more like a bait that was waiting for the invaders to take it. Actually, the significance of such a trap was very clear and blunt, yet people often found it impossible to turn down. Perhaps not everyone knew that the tower was the control center of the city of the sky, but everyone knew that it was in the central position and offered plenty of potential benefits. 
In the face of such a huge temptation, no one would give up even if there was deadly danger on the terrace. After all, humans would die for money. It was predictable that the elves would definitely not give up, just like Dark Blade. Hence, there was no reason for Cheyenne to give up, too. Linley wanted something different from them. He could ignore the immortal king's treasure, but not the great sky castle. Linley still had the key to the sky castle that was left behind by Jeresco, after all. Mage Felic, do you think it can really lead inside the tower? Cheyenne turned to look at Linley. Although he seemed to be asking for Linley's opinion, he was actually inviting him to go in together. Linley looked away and thought about it for a moment. This is an obvious trap, but the magical thousand contraption lock cannot be unlocked. There is only hope here. However, we can only find out if it can really lead to the inside of the tower by going in and exploring it. After a brief conversation, the two of them decided to venture into the terrace and explore it, even though they knew that the terrace was a trap. Although the terrace was about 10 meters high, it was not an issue for the legendary powerhouses to fly past it. When they looked in through the door, they could vaguely see what was inside. Were their worries and concerns redundant? Lin Li and Cheyenne looked at each other, strangely, before carefully making their way inside together. One step, two steps, three steps. All of a sudden, everything around them changed. Everything in the room had disappeared, replaced by a dense forest. White clouds slowly fluttered in the blue sky, while the sun radiated a dazzling light. In the dense forest, the leaves rustled in the wind, and everything seemed so beautiful and real, without a single trace of illusion. How is this possible? Linley turned to look at Cheyenne, only to realize that he was shocked and bewildered too. Linley was not a rash person. Since he knew that there was a trap on the terrace, he was very careful when entering. Despite being a guru, he did not find any magewefs, alchemy arrays, nor magic gears. In fact, there seemed to be nothing wrong with the magical waves either. Looking at the completely different scene in front of him, Linley recalled everything that happened just now, and a legend popped up in his head all of a sudden. It was about the high elves in the dark age. It seemed that the current situation could only be explained by that legend. Cheyenne held his staff tightly and glanced at his surroundings vigilantly while saying, Mage Felic, do you think that that legend could be real? Linley didn't see any trace of magic gears, because legend had it that this was a kind of magic. Despite being a legendary mage, Linley did not feel the slightest fluctuation of mana, because it was a magic spell cast by ten mages of the sanctuary realm. Although the Dark Age had already ended and the High Elves had been overthrown, while the Tree of Eternity was destroyed, no one would question their achievements in magic. During the heyday of the High Elves and their reign over Anril, the High Elves were the strongest race because of their perfect magical talents. It was said that the strongest defense force in the Palace of the High Elves was not the Queen's Magic Legion, but the Orderly Maze put up by ten figures of the Sanctuary Realm. The Orderly Maze was a level 25 spell that had a weak magical wave that was subtle and even impossible to feel at ordinary times. If its presence was not known in advance, even a legendary mage who had mastered the rule power would not be able to detect its existence. That was one of the reasons that Lin Li and Cheyenne thought of this legend. Due to the sudden change in the environment, the two level 21 legendary mages did not feel the slightest fluctuation. It was as if the forest had always existed in the room, and they just naturally walked into it. Although they knew since the start that there would be traps in this terrace, None thought that it would be the legendary orderly maze. Since it was called an orderly maze, it definitely had order as its highest rule. As long as one followed the correct path, they would not be affected at all. Linley and Cheyenne had entered through the window, hence, they would definitely be punished by messing up the order, though no one knew how. However, the four of them were all keeping their guard up. They believed that the High Elves would not be so merciful as to only warn them using this spell. The Orderly Maze was a level 25 spell that was set up by ten powerhouses of the Sanctuary Realm. If the intruders would simply be transported to a different place, it would be a huge insult to magic. 
just as Linley and Cheyenne scrutinized the surroundings alertly while guessing the kind of magic that would be solidified in the orderly maze, a loud roar sounded from the forest all of a sudden. A demon exhaling a powerful breath rushed aggressively towards everyone. The demon was twenty meters tall, with a huge sheep's head and a pair of giant spiral sharp horns on top of his head. He also had red eyes and was continuously exhaling fumes of black gas from his nostrils. The demon's body looked just like that of a human, but it was much taller and stronger. It also had a pair of black wings. With every step of the demon, the ground would shake. The powerful aura also rose with the demon's footsteps, while the black gas became thicker. Staring at the aggressive demon, Linley and Cheyenne suddenly thought of the demon Lord Martha. Compared to Anrel, the Endless Abyss was a place of survival of the fittest. The demon lord who could rule a layer of the abyss was definitely the strongest demon in that layer, because he had to challenge the previous lord and brave various battles to take the throne. A short-lived demon lord would never leave his name behind even in the abyss, let alone in Anrel. Linley and Cheyenne were now facing a legendary demon lord well-known in Anrel, Lord Martha, who was from the 50th level of the abyss. In the Endless Abyss, a general law applied. The demon lords that were closer to the bottom were stronger, while those on the higher levels tended to challenge the ones on the lower levels because they thought that they were powerful enough to do so. Of course, such challenges had rarely been successful. It seemed that the lower levels of the abyss were more environmentally helpful for the demons. Linley didn't know whether the legend was true or not. However, he could clearly feel that the oppressive aura coming from the demon Lord Martha was stronger than that of the Lord of Souls. However, as the ruler of the fiftieth level of the abyss, why did the demon Lord Martha show up here? Or have we somehow arrived on the fiftieth level? All of a sudden, a possibility popped up in Lin Li's mind, and he turned to glance at Cheyenne before the two of them chorused, Damn it, the Seven Realm Spiral. What truly shocked Lin Li and Cheyenne was not the powerful and formidable demon Lord Martha, but the location and circumstances of their encounter with him. It was undoubtedly shocking, the high elves were indeed shrewd and ruthless. They did not let the level 25 orderly maze go to waste at all. They actually further set up a level 25 spell, the Seven Realm Spiral. To Linley and Cheyenne, a level 21 legendary mage was worlds apart from level 25, the Sanctuary Realm. However, they were not completely clueless about the magic of the Seven Realm Spiral, because it had an extraordinary significance to all legendary mages. The Seven Realm Spiral was not just a spell, but also a magical domain which was powerful beyond the imagination of a legendary mage. When a mage stepped into the legendary realm and began to touch the rule power, he would master the rules and make the power his through insight into rule power. However, compared to the rules used by the Seven Realm Spiral, the mastery of the rule power that the legendary mages had was nothing. Contained in the Seven Realm Spiral was a domain that only a powerhouse of the Sanctuary Realm could enter. Not only was there the usage of rule power, there was also a change in rule power. It was the godly domain that created and ruined everything. It could be said that the magical domain of the Seven Realm Spiral was what all mages pursued. If the legendary mage's knowledge and mastery of the rules was considered to be the first step of literacy, the Seven Realm Spiral would be a pompous, articulate, and beautiful essay that was not just made up of a pile of words, but a whole world created by the author. This world would then be what gave those words a new and different meaning. Every mage who had ever dreamed would see the Seven Realm Spiral as his ultimate, holy grail. Just like everyone who learned to become literate would dream of using these words to compose a complete article, mages wanted to fulfill their dreams too. Therefore, even though the Seven Realm Spiral was a level 25 spell and a perfect magical domain that only the strongest in the Sanctuary Realm could create, almost all mages knew of its existence because it was their dream. The demon lord Martha seemed to treat Linley and Cheyenne as challengers for his position. After roaring menacingly a few times, he reached out to condense a dark spear from the black mist around him. He didn't give them a chance to think at all, and instead immediately smashed his spear down at them like he was smashing a mountain. Linley and his followers quickly dodged, while Cheyenne flew into the air to wave his staff at the demon Lord Martha. He then said to Linley, Please wait a minute, Mage Felic. 
let me take care of this demon. Oh, I'll have to trouble you then, Master Cheyenne, Linley said politely before taking his undead servants to the side away from the battle, feeling safe and secure. It was as if it all had nothing to do with him anymore, and he was just a member of the audience, waiting to see a good show. Cheyenne smiled wryly, and thought to himself, I knew I would have to perform this task alone, regardless of whether I said those words out of courtesy or not. That mage Felic is just like that, he will never bother wasting his efforts as long as he could rely on someone else to solve the problem. Besides, there's no way you can blame him, because he will simply say that there is no need for him to intervene, since others could solve it. The demon lord Martha could not be bothered what the challengers were doing and saw no need to spare them any mercy even though they were not surrounding him to fight. His first goal was naturally to deal with the one who got singled out first. The wings on his back unfolded, and he flew towards Cheyenne while his spear fell apart into countless black flying arrows. Although the power was dispersed, every black arrow contained enough destructive aura to make itself seem intimidating. It was as if an arrow was all it took to destroy the entire land. The sounds of the arrow shooting through the sky were akin to the yelling and howling of thousands of undead creatures. It was as if humans were having their souls ripped out of their bodies. Cheyenne hurriedly put his thoughts in order. It was not the time for him to distract himself now. After all, he was facing the fierce abyssal demon lord. With a swift spell, a dazzling light burst out of his staff, and a huge tornado that spanned tens of meters shielded him from the flying demon lord. The countless black arrows were swallowed up by the tornado in an instant and turned it black. However, none of them pierced through the tornado, and it destroyed them all. The demon lord Martha let out a deafening roar and threw a punch with his muscular arm, causing the entire space to quake. The tornado that had just swallowed countless black sharp arrows collapsed instantly under the mighty power. However, the punches did not stop and his formidable power continued to attack Cheyenne, who was behind the tornado. However, in the face of this powerful attack that almost shattered space, Cheyenne did not avoid it, and instead put on a smug and disdainful smirk. He moved the staff slightly forward and seemed to have condensed the space into an invisible giant shield, after which a loud explosive noise sounded in the air, leaving the demon Lord Martha with no choice but to retreat. Seeing this, Lin Li's pupils constricted slightly, after which he lowered his head and stopped paying attention to the intense battle in the sky. Although he only observed it for a while, Lin Li was no longer doubtful. Although the demon Mather was from the fiftieth level of the abyss, he only had the strength of level twenty-one now. Cheyenne might also be only level twenty-one, but he was at the peak of his strength. His power was likely to be nearing level twenty-two. Instead of observing the battle, Linley focused his attention on the world formed by the Seven Realm Spiral as his strong mental spells seemed to have spread to the entire space instantly. The Seven Realm Spiral was a level 25 Sanctuary Realm spell that could not to be seen through by just anyone. However, Linley had gained plenty of knowledge from the Book of Eternity and could vaguely sense something about it even though he could not get a clear idea of the rules contained in this spell. The rules contained in the Seven Realm Spiral could be said to have been used perfectly as the best interpretation of the rules of this world. To use a metaphor, one might not be able to recreate an interesting and impeccable article, but it would still be possible to get some enlightenment from it once the reader put in his heart and soul. Although the sense of enlightenment was vague, it was deeply etched in Lin Li's memory, and he might get to use it one day, though it might not come in handy now. It might become his guiding light in the future, or perhaps it could be considered a kind of accumulation that would become a river with time. Of course, Linley was just trying to find something to do. If he couldn't use it in the end, it wouldn't matter, but if he could, he would get an advantage. With fierce explosions and unyielding shrieks, the demon Lord Martha who dominated the fiftieth level of the abyss disappeared because of the legendary magic of Cheyenne. The original calm was restored and everything seemed to have returned to its original state as if nothing had happened at all. The only proof of the intense battle was the crack left on the ground by the demon lord. Cheyenne heaved a sigh of relief, not because he was overwhelmed by the demon lord, but because he finally got to vent his anger and get back at the undead creatures after the intense battle. However, 
Cheyenne understood the Seven Realm Spiral and knew that the real battle had yet to come. Although the demon Lord Martha was a little weak, no one knew what kind of enemy they would be facing next. The only thing they knew was that the High Elves would never be merciful to intruders. Cheyenne descended back onto the ground and walked towards Linley, only to discover that Linley was daydreaming and stuck in a trance while he was fighting the demon lord. In fact, Linley didn't even know that he had already killed the demon. Cheyenne wanted to step forth to ask him about it, but he changed his mind after looking at the undead creatures beside Linley. Instead, he decided to wait quietly for Linley to snap out of his trance. Even the powerful figures of the sanctuary realm that had employed the Seven Realm Spiral would never expect that there would one day be an intruder who invaded through his understanding of the rule power of the Seven Realm Spiral. Of course, it wouldn't be too feasible for Linley to gain insight and grasp the rules with this method. He would at most get some inspiration. A while later, Linley finally took back his mental strength and obtained some new knowledge, though he was still unsure if it was a valuable gain that would be of help to him. He put his thoughts away temporarily and turned to look at Cheyenne, who was not too far away. He smilingly asked, Master Cheyenne, have you gotten rid of the demon lord? Cheyenne was on the verge of vomiting blood with irritation, but he nodded and said, Yes, I've just done so. What were you thinking about earlier on, Mage Felic? You were so engrossed. It's nothing. It is said that the Seven Realm Spiral needs one to destroy seven worlds before they can go out. I wonder what awaits us next, Linley answered perfunctorily since he couldn't say that he was thinking about the Seven Realm Spiral rules. Although he would be telling the truth, it would sound faker than a lie. Cheyenne shook his head helplessly, and although he knew that Linley was patronizing him, he did not continue to question him further. Instead, he said, Mage Felic, the demon lord of this world has been defeated. Should we find out how to enter the next world? However, this question did not require Lin Li's answer. As soon as Cheyenne spoke, fluctuations formed in the surrounding space, and everything in front of his eyes became blurred and unreal. When the space stabilized again and the surrounding scenery became clear again, a continuous roar filled their ears. The few of them looked around to see that there was a silver dragon in the spot where Cheyenne had just killed Martha and it was fighting with a blue-black dragon that was surrounded by countless grieving spirits. There were also three figures that were shuttling around and supporting the silver dragon with arrows and magic. Upon sight of this, Lin Li and Cheyenne could not help but secretly rejoice, because they recognized at a glance that the blue-black dragon fighting the silver dragon was one of the top magical beasts in the Endless Abyss. It was the Abyssal Demon Dragon. This abyssal demon dragon had a body that was larger than the green dragon king that they had encountered previously. The two horns on its head were thicker than the thighs of a human, and its spinal spikes elongated all the way from its neck to its tailbone, while the wide wings unfolded oppressively. What was particularly shocking was the numerous grieving spirits that were appearing and wailing, all of which were the souls beneath the abyssal demon dragon. That was the reason Lin Li and Cheyenne did not want to face it. The abyssal demon dragon's black dragon breath was formidable and terrifying even though it was just like claws. Although the dragon breath was not hot enough to burn everything, it could ignite the soul of its opponents and make them die in agony. The Elves Why are they here? Cheyenne could not help but frown slightly, because the elves and the dark blade had an unclear relationship. Hence, he was also very wary of the elves. However, Linley was not very worried, and instead smiled, as he said, Great. We don't know what we might encounter in the Seven Realm Spiral. It's always safer to have more people. Let's go take a look, Master Cheyenne. I wonder how they got in. The demon lord Martha that they'd encountered just now was not really that strong, but they had only entered the first world of the Seven Realm Spiral. The abyssal demon dragon fighting the silver dragon was clearly stronger than the demon lord Martha. They could imagine that the guardians of the subsequent worlds would definitely be stronger. Cheyenne also knew that since they were all now trapped in the seven realm spiral, the high elf's traps would definitely be merciless. Hence, the only way they could break through the seven worlds was through cooperation. Cheyenne thus had no choice but to hold his qualms back and follow Linley to approach the elves. At least, the elves were not the Dark Blade. 
Since Lenli and Cheyenne could recognize the Seven Realm Spiral, how could the elves have not thought about it? When Lenli had just arrived in this world, Elder Randy, who had transformed into the Silver Dragon, already noticed them. Actually, the elves thought the same as Lenli and the rest. Although they could get through the first world with their own power, they might not be able to do so for the subsequent ones. In such circumstances, there would be no harm in having some help. Hence, when Lenli and the rest arrived, Gilder had already come out of the battlefield to wait for them to discuss the situation according to Elder Randy's instructions. Mage Felic, Mage Cheyenne, I didn't expect you guys to be here at the Seven Realm Spiral too. Gilder held his longbow by his rib cage and touched the quiver around his waist. Although he had plans to cooperate with them, he was still keeping his guard up. To elves, humans were the most untrustworthy and the most unpredictable. They had to prevent humans from creating potential trouble. Yeah, what a coincidence. You guys are here too. Linley casually acknowledged Gilder. Although he noticed that the latter was keeping his guard up, Linley did not take it to heart, and instead looked up at the battle in the sky. Although Gilder, the legendary archer, had left the battle, which weakened the elf side somewhat, it didn't quite affect the battle. The abyssal demon dragon roared terrifyingly, with anger and anxiety audible in its voice. It seemed to be feeling furious and anxious about being suppressed and its inability to gain the upper hand. Rather speechless because of Lin Li's nonchalant reply, Gilder thought, what do you mean it's a coincidence that we're here too? This is the Seven Realm Spiral, not a place for casual strolling. Do you know how dangerous it is in here? Seeing that there seemed to be some tension, Cheyenne stepped forward with a smile and talked to Gilder about the elf's arrival in the Seven Realm Spiral. In fact, when they recalled the time when they had entered the teleportation portal, they realized that the elves and the Dark Blade didn't seem to be that close to each other back then. Cheyenne didn't expect to be favored by the elves, but hoped that they would at least maintain a neutral position when he finally clashed with the Dark Blade. Cheyenne and Gilder talked about the experiences that they had had along the way. Although Linley was staring at the battle in front, he was also actively listening to their conversation and thinking to himself, it's really scary to be stupid. Just like with Cheyenne, the ordeals that the elves had encountered could only be described as bad luck. Linley had no idea what kind of magic gears they had mistakenly come in contact with that caused a massive number of undead creatures and a few powerful alchemy colossuses to appear. The alchemy colossuses were far from the weaker alchemy colossuses of the Lordaeron kingdom. Each of their offensive spells had power above the legendary level, and their alchemy arrays allowed them to be immune to magical attacks. What made the elves shocked was that the alchemy colossuses contained souls, hence, they were rather fluid in their motions, unlike ordinary alchemy colossuses that were slow and dim-witted. Elder Randy guessed that the High Elves could very likely have tried to fuse their souls with the alchemy colossuses in order to obtain eternal life. That in turn resulted in the creation of such monsters. Although Elder Randy had great strength, and even destroyed an alchemy colossus, he still had no choice but to escape in the face of the unstoppable alchemy colossuses powerful enough to rival a dragon. Fortunately, those undead creatures and alchemy colossuses seemed to be restricted to moving in a fixed area, by some rules. They left after we were chased by them for a while, Gilder narrated their experiences fearfully. After hearing Gilder's description, Cheyenne felt that what he'd gone through was much more justified and fair. He had merely run into two legendary vengeful spirits. If he had run into the alchemy colossuses, it would have been unlikely for him to make it this far. However, while he was feeling fortunate, he also found out more about the Seven Realm Spiral that made him feel even more terrified. Even the strong guardians out there were powerful. Hence, the ones in the Seven Realm Spiral were definitely not weak. Gilder, who didn't notice Cheyenne's gleeful expression, continued, after that, we went to the tower in the middle and discovered that the magical thousand contraption lock couldn't be unlocked at all. Hence, we could only enter from an open terrace. To our surprise, the high elves actually set up the orderly maze and the seven realm spiral in here. Cheyenne knew that the elves were prideful, so he took initiative to offer to cooperate to pass the seven realm spiral after hearing about their situation. 
Gilder had already obtained permission from Elder Randy in advance, and had approached them with the intention of cooperating. Hence, he didn't have any objections after hearing Cheyenne mention it. Cheyenne and Gilder exchanged information. Although it seemed to be a happy conversation on the surface, Lindley remained silent throughout, and instead kept his eyes fixed on the battlefield ahead. When he encountered the Green Dragons previously, Elder Randy showcased considerable strength and abilities. However, Lindley was still feeling a little dejected about his power. It was said that the Abyssal Demon Dragon carried the blood of the Dragon of Destruction, and thus inherited part of its rule power. In the Endless Abyss, the Abyssal Demon Dragon was undoubtedly an overbearing overlord, and could only be seen in the deepest layers. Lindley reckoned that the strength of the Abyssal Demon Dragon in front of him was probably at the peak of level 22. Apart from its physical strength that was far higher than that of ordinary dragons, the dark magic used by the Abyssal Demon Dragon was even more powerful and overbearing. The aura of destruction filled the entire space, and the black flames that devoured souls rendered even Elder Randy helpless. However, apart from fearing the Abyssal Demon Dragon, Lindley was also afraid that the Silver Dragon that Elder Randy transformed into would not be enough to battle and retaliate against the different types of magical attacks, even despite having defeated the Abyssal Demon Dragon. Two WYRMS, one black and one white, were battling each other in the sky, and a loud roar sounded in the air, making the people beneath feel the tremors. The Elven Princess, Elune and the fire mage Kilifen shuttled back and forth around the two WYRMS and constantly launched sharp attacks against the Abyssal Demon Dragon in order to give Elder Randy's Silver Dragon some help. However, although the power of Kilifen's fire magic was extraordinary, the damage done to the Abyssal Demon Dragon was not very significant. The WYRMS had high magic resistance in the first place, and the Abyssal Demon Dragon that had inherited the blood of the Dragon of Destruction was almost immune to magic. If Kilifen could have a level's worth of its power, he might be able to break the defensive layer of the Abyssal Demon Dragon. However, the difference in their strength was one level, which was worlds apart. Hence, his magic fire had no significant impact on the Abyssal Demon Dragon. The one who could really provide effective support for Elder Randy was actually Princess Elune who had the weakest power on the site, she had the Song of Heart, which proved to be of great help. During the intense battle, its melancholic and melodious singing was clear and pleasing amidst the roaring. The sharp arrows darted out together with the singing, each with the ability to blast off several dragon scales on the abyssal dragon's body. The scales of the Abyssal Demon Dragon had arguably the best defense of all WYRMS. Even a legendary level strike from a Sword Sage might not have any effect. Yet, a loon who had just reached the legendary realm could actually break through the defense of the Abyssal Demon Dragon again and again with her Song of Heart. If the Song of Heart was still being used by the Wind Whisperer Hull, one arrow would probably be enough to kill the Abyssal Demon Dragon. After all, the elven princess Elune was too weak, and could only use the Song of Heart to harass and disrupt the Abyssal Demon Dragon. Although the power of the Song of Heart was not comparable to the Stars of Furies, it was also one of the most powerful weapons that Linley had ever seen in Anril. It could make a user who was new to the legendary realm gain the ability to break past the defense of the Abyssal Demon Dragon. It was even more brilliant than Linley's Helio Scepter. Although breaking past the defense wouldn't result in much damage per se, it would make the Abyssal Demon Dragon become vexed, and it also caused the latter to consider giving up on targeting the Silver Dragon to take out the annoying bug first. However, the power of the Silver Dragon was never inferior to the Abyssal Demon Dragon in the first place. Hence, it obviously wouldn't let the Abyssal Demon Dragon slip past it. The fierce and menacing Abyssal Demon Dragon roared in vain before its body burst with huge mana waves. However, all of its powerful counterattacks were destroyed by the Silver Dragon. Each attack not only did not help change its situation, it even accelerated its defeat. Linley looked up to watch the fierce battle in the sky and witnessed the Abyssal Demon Dragon breaking out again and again before getting suppressed once more. He could not help but mutter to himself, the end of the crossbow. Cheyenne and Gilder had long ended their conversation. Although the elves came with the intention to cooperate, 
they obviously had no interest in chatting with the humans excessively. After Cheyenne returned to Lenly, he was also attracted by the fierce battle in the sky. Apart from marveling over the formidable power of both parties, they began to grow worried about their journey ahead. Upon hearing Lin Li's slurred murmuring, Cheyenne turned to look at him in bewilderment. Just as he was about to ask what Lin Li had said, the battle in the sky went through a dramatic change. Princess Alun suddenly stopped behind the silver dragon, and an arrow emitting a radiant green light was stacked on top of the Song of Heart. She then pulled the bowstring slowly with her fingers as if with all her might. A full ten seconds passed. Even an ordinary human archer would have released several arrows in a row during that time. However, Princess Alun only drew the bow halfway. As she slowly pulled it away, the mana emitted by the Song of Heart also became more and more intense. The mana was actually equivalent to that of a legendary powerhouse, one. Attracted by the powerful mana of the Song of Heart, Cheyenne looked at the battlefield again. However, astonishment was written all over his face this time. Sweat trickled down Princess Alun's forehead, and her arm seemed to tremble slightly due to excessive force applied. She suddenly released her finger, which was already at its limits. There was no loud sound of bowstrings, only a melodious song which seemed to be able to cleanse one's soul and drown out all other sounds on the battlefield. Even the screaming vengeful spirits, too, suddenly fell silent at this moment. The arrow that glowed with green light disappeared instantly from the Song of Heart and evolved into a ray of green light which penetrated the body of the Silver Dragon. However, it did not cause the Silver Dragon any damage at all. Immediately after the green light submerged into the body of the Abyssal Demon Dragon, however, a dull and explosive sound filled the air. They could all see how bloated the Abyssal Demon Dragon had become. The Abyssal Demon Dragon wailed and shrieked in a shrill voice. At the same time, the blood of the dragon and its crushed innards gushed out, while the numerous vengeful spirits seemed to have broken free and scattered around. The silver dragon didn't give the abyssal demon dragon the chance to catch its breath at all. Instead, it suddenly rushed upwards and bit the abyssal demon dragon brutally. The Attack of the Stars Cheyenne could not hide his astonishment at all when he saw the arrow shot by Princess Alun. Linley was also shocked when he heard Cheyenne's shriek. It was said that the attack was a type of archery that Wind Whisperer Hull used to kill the King of Leaden Kingdom. The power, contained in Princess Alun's arrow, was akin to all of the power possessed by a legendary figure. This was not the same as the full power blow of a legendary powerhouse, just like how a magical crystal was definitely not as powerful as a magical beast's full blow. 1. I think author is confused whether the princess is just before or just after breaking through to legendary realm. He keeps switching between the two. 2. There were some ghosts lurking below the enemy dragon, remember? That's what they were, apparently. That arrow could be considered to have released all of the power of mana that was contained in a legendary magical crystal. Although the body of the abyssal demon dragon was strong, it was not strong enough to withstand such a daunting arrow. Besides, the Song of Heart was only drawn halfway. If it were to be drawn fully, the Abyssal Demon Dragon would probably be destroyed. However, Linley also knew that there would definitely be a huge price to pay. Although the mana fluctuations didn't seem to have done Princess Alun any harm, the effect was definitely hefty. Of course, this price to pay was huge for an ordinary person, but peanuts to Princess Alun. After a while, the silver dragon ripped the abyssal demon dragon apart and flew towards Linley and the rest, all covered in blood. Later on, Elder Randy returned to his elven appearance and slowly descended from the sky with a faint smile on his face. Mage Felic, I didn't expect that we'd meet here in the Seven Realm Spiral. This again. Can't the elves say something else? They didn't expect it? Linley thought to himself in annoyance. He stroked his chin, smilingly, and said, Hee hee, what a coincidence. I'm in quite a bit of luck lately. I didn't encounter anything interesting along the way, so I came straight here. Lin Li's words reminded Elder Randy of the alchemy colossuses that were still outside. He pursed his lips slightly, and said, Mage Felic, you should know quite a bit about this Seven Realm Spiral. 
The only way we can get out is by breaking through the seven realms and defeating all the guardians. Regarding this, Gilder has already spoken to Master Cheyenne just now, and I don't have any objections about cooperating and breaking through the seven realm spiral together, Linley said without hesitation. He obviously wouldn't turn down someone's offer to help him, since such an opportunity was rare. No negotiation or bargaining was actually needed, because everyone knew how powerful the Seven Realm Spiral was, and that none of them was strong enough to pass through safely. Even if the elves had already defeated the formidable Abyssal Demon Dragon, they dared not say that they could deal with the following guardians. The few of them stood together, and only spoke a few words before their surroundings became blurry again. When everything cleared up, they had already appeared in a dark cave which was exceptionally spacious and wide. It had a height of 100 meters and width of a few hundred meters. Where do we go now? asked Princess Alun, who was staring at both sides of the cave peculiarly. Since it was a cave, could there be another exit? Anywhere is fine. I believe we'll definitely run into the guardians of this realm no matter where we go, Linley said. It was one of the seven realms, and the only way to get out was to defeat all of the guardians of the realm. Hence, it was all the same. They picked a random direction and began advancing into the cave slowly. None of them knew what kind of an enemy they would face, but they were certain that it would be stronger than the abyssal demon dragon. Indeed, not long after they left, a sudden explosion sounded from the bottom of the cave. Next, a colorful flame shot out of the cave. The Poisonous Flame Two-Headed Python This is the lair of the Poisonous Flame Two-Headed Python. Elder Randy exclaimed, immediately guarding against the magic and shielding all the elves on his side. Linley and Cheyenne dared not delay at all, and immediately exhibited their strongest defensive magic to receive the colorful poisonous flames. Besides, they did not just exhibit one kind of defensive magic. They held up the entire magic defense without even catching their breaths. They continuously launched spell after spell. Like giant waves crashing against the reef, the raging colorful poisonous flames instantly swallowed up Linley and the rest who were putting up the defensive layer. Apart from the roars of the poisonous flames, the entire cave was filled with the sounds of magic cracking. A long while later, the tide of colorful poisonous flames finally passed revealing Linley and the rest who were putting up their defense. However, they did not have time to be glad that they had withstood it, because immediately after the flames were out, the colorful double-headed python was pouncing onto them. Elder Randy again transformed into the silver dragon and leaped towards the colorful double-headed python, while three elves followed closely behind and attacked it with arrows. The poisonous flame two-headed python was actually similar to the abyssal demon dragon, and had a weak resistance to magic and physical attacks. However, the toughest part about it was that it had dual domain of highly toxic poison and flame domain. Hence, although it had yet to reach level 23, it was incomparably stronger than the abyssal demon dragon. Linley raised the Helios scepter, but soon put it down without casting a spell. Instead, he said, hey, it's too narrow here. Although it was a soft murmur, everyone else could still hear them clearly. Both the elves and Cheyenne were extremely infuriated and on the verge of vomiting blood. Although it was a cave, there was still hundreds of meters from where they were to the cave opening. How was that narrow? Not only did Linley not take action, none of his undead servants did, either. The three of them stood there leisurely as if the situation in front of them had nothing to do with themselves. The only difference between them and spectators was that they wouldn't applaud anyone for performing wonderfully, and instead observed quietly. The poisonous flame two-headed python was indeed very strong, but it unfortunately met a group of stronger opponents. Yet, it still did not retreat. Since they had to defeat it in order to pass through this realm, both Cheyenne and the elves did not hold back and gave it their all, for they did not want to be trapped in this realm any longer. The whole cave was shaking vigorously as if it were going to collapse. However, that did not last too long. Facing the siege of five legendary powerhouses, amongst which were level 22 elven elders and Princess Elune who was holding the Song of Heart, the poisonous flame two-headed python couldn't make a single sound at all, and peace was eventually restored. Everything in the cave finally quietened down, and Elder Randy turned to look at Linley helplessly. 
Although he was dissatisfied with Lin Li's lack of contribution, there was nothing he could say about it. Unlike Elder Randy, Princess Alun rolled her eyes at Lin Li and walked towards the side with a song of heart angrily. Lin Li touched his nose, but he was not embarrassed. When he saw Cheyenne, he threw an antidote at him. Cheyenne didn't sense anything amiss during the battle with the poisonous flame two-headed python. He only started to feel that his mana seemed to be abnormally agitated after receiving Lin Li's antidote. Cheyenne didn't ask much, and instead unplugged the cork to chug the potion. He felt that the antidote really calmed the fluctuations down. Hence, he thanked Lin Li when he returned the bottle. Elder Randy looked at Cheyenne and Lin Li, followed by the elves behind him. Although pride was important, his life meant more to him, and so did Princess Alun. However, just as he was about to ask Lin Li, the surrounding environment suddenly changed again. After a while, the surrounding scenery became clearer, they had already left the lair of the poisonous flame two-headed python. However, their current environment did not seem to be much different from that cave, the uneven wall of the cave had become a wall made of even bluestone bricks, and that was it. Looking forward, they could see several forks, but none of them knew exactly where they led. Mage Felic, what did you give Mage Cheyenne earlier on? Elder Randy did not bother about the surroundings, and instead questioned Linley nothing much. I just happened to see that Master Cheyenne got poisoned by the poisonous flame two-headed python, so I gave him an antidote. Lin Li's answer was nonchalant, but he was scrutinizing the elves. So, Mage Felic, is there anyone among us that was also poisoned? Elder Randy quickly asked. Since he had already abandoned his pride once before in the camp, he didn't mind doing it again. Lin Li nodded and whipped out three potions, before saying, Elder Randy, your strength will not be affected, but there are still some signs of poisoning in these three elves. Linley was not being pretentious, but he was still wary when he took risks. He would only eat his own food, what more potions? He would never offer his antidotes or potions unless the elven elders asked for it. The only reason he gave it to Cheyenne was, because the latter was his ally whom he was closer to. Hilafen and Gilder consumed the potion without hesitation, but when Princess Elun smelled the pungent odor of the potion, she could not help but frown slightly and grit her teeth before downing it. She had no idea that she had ingested a potion that was one hundred times more revolting than this when she was unconscious because of the viper's venom. After brief shenanigans, everyone began to look at the surrounding environment. Regardless of their perspective, they all felt that the place was more like a maze. The various lanes were mysterious, and although the walls seemed to be made of bluestone bricks, they were in the seven realm spiral where walls could not be broken easily. This time, they had a hard time deciding where to go. Unlike in the lair of the poisonous flame two-headed python where they only had two directions to choose from, there were numerous ways here, and there seemed to be endless options. It's a labyrinth. Could the guardian of this world be, the prehistoric magical beast, Minotaur? Elder Randy suddenly thought of a possibility. According to legends, the magical beast minotaurs lived in the Lost Palace. However, the prehistoric magical beasts like minotaurs had strength at least in the sanctuary realm. With such power, how could they just be a guardian of the Seven Realm Spiral? The only thing that was worth feeling fortunate about was the absence of magic gears. The only danger was the complicated passages. They continuously left magical marks behind and tried every lane in a bid to find the guardian who was hiding in the labyrinth. Using such a foolish method, they finally entered an extremely wide hall at the end of a passage after making countless detours. The hall was empty and free of debris and decorations alike. In the middle of the hall stood the guardians of this realm, who seemed to be waiting for them. The Lion Scorpion, the Rainbow Lion Scorpion Kings. Everyone including Lin Li heaved a sigh of relief after seeing the guardians. Although the two level 22 rainbow lion scorpion kings were snarling and exuding powerful mana waves, they were at least less overbearing than prehistoric magical beasts. In the blink of an eye, a fierce battle unfolded in the hall. The two rainbow lion scorpion kings were weaker than the poisonous flame two-headed python, but they soon knew the reason that the two rainbow lion scorpion kings had still become the guardians of this realm. 
Compared to the rest, Linley was more familiar with them because he had once met Rainbow Lion Scorpion Kings in the Abyss of Tharlan, and they had the same characteristics. Although there was now one less than the three Rainbow Lion Scorpion Kings that Linley had encountered, they still possessed level 22 strength. This time, even Linley couldn't sit back and do nothing. He led his two undead servants and tackled one of the Rainbow Lion Scorpion Kings together with Cheyenne while the elves handled the other. Back then, in the ancient arena, Linley found the three Rainbow Lion Scorpion Kings with different souls to be difficult to deal with. However, things were different now because he was a level 21 legendary mage and had the help of Cheyenne and the rest. They separated the two Rainbow Lion Scorpion Kings, hence, their characteristics were definitely suppressed. A fierce battle started quickly and ended quickly too. The two Rainbow Lion Scorpion Kings did not surround them for too long, and were soon killed with much less effort than they'd put in to kill the poisonous flame two-headed python previously. If you're enjoying my content, please consider donating a coffee. Or checking out my shirts on Tee Public. After ending the battle, none of them said a single word, and they stood silently on the ground instead, waiting to advance to the next realm. Although the two Rainbow Lion Scorpion Kings in this realm had not brought them too much trouble, none of them were happy, because they didn't think that they would stay as lucky for long. When they arrived at the next realm, the elves frowned even before spotting any guardians, seemingly conflicted. In this realm, apart from the strong death aura, there was an extremely disgusting stench of decay. The elves had never so desperately wanted the guardians to appear as they did now. They just wanted to get rid of the guardian as soon as possible and leave this disgusting place. Although they speculated about the identity of the guardians in this realm, they could not help but shiver when they really saw them. They knew that this realm should have belonged to an undead lord, but they did not expect there to be not one, but three undead lords, who all appeared at the same time. The humorous WYRM in the sky, which was physically similar to the Green Dragon King, was one of the three undead lords. On the ground, there were two other undead lords who were commanding the infinite undead army. One of them was a lich king who was shielded in a magical robe, while the other was the skeletal lord who did not cover his body. In Anril, undead creatures were arguably the toughest opponents to exist, second only to sages. They did not fear death and would not feel agony or pain. Even if they only had a skeleton left, they would never stop until they defeated their enemies. Necromagic was also known for its wickedness. It usually targeted either the vitality or the soul of the enemy. It had the ability to rapidly corrode its enemy's body or cause the enemy's soul to suffer in boundless pain. However, Holy Light, the piece of the debris of the stars that Linley owned, possessed the power to purify all filth and put a restraint on undead creatures. Of course, he was not stupid enough to take out Holy Light directly nor was he arrogant enough to think that he could destroy the three undead lords just by using holy light alone. A battle began instantly, and Elder Randy again transformed into a silver dragon, which flew into the sky to fight the humorous WYRM, which was one of the undead lords. Princess Elune followed closely while holding the Song of Heart. Cheyenne and the other two elves joined forces to resist the Lich King's attack. Although this was their first time cooperating, there was a certain tacit understanding between them. Lin Li and his two undead servants were fighting the skeletal lord. Although there was a drastic difference in levels, the power of holy light was enough to intimidate the skeletal lord. After entering the Seven Realm Spiral, they had all faced intense battles, and even Elder Randy, the most powerful amongst them, couldn't hide his fatigue after defeating his opponent. None of them could relax, because they were only at the Fifth Realm. Everyone sped up to recover, but as the undead realm collapsed, a new world appeared in front of them again. In this world, there was still substantial death aura. If it weren't for the lack of stench of decay, they would have thought that they were still in the undead realm. Apart from the undead lords of the undead realm, what else could there be in such an environment? Their doubts did not last long, it seemed that the guardians of this realm were not willing to let them wait. The sounds of hooves filled the air amidst the dark mist. Next, they were greeted with the sight of an immaculate cavalry which rushed towards them aggressively. Everyone couldn't help but take a deep breath, because the sprinting cavalry was not composed of ordinary knights. 
They were all riding on nightmare beasts with crimson horns and hellfire hooves. Everyone knew that the Death Knights were the only ones who could tame and control undead creatures. One of the Death Knights stood out from the rest because he was rather tall and exuded a terrifying aura. Although no one except Linley had seen the Retribution Knight before, the rest did know quite a bit about the Retribution Knights who were mutants among the undead creatures. The class of rules had no effect on them, and they had their independent systems. No external force could dominate them, either. Only legendary Retribution Knights could lead Death Knights. Although Lanley had subdued a batch of Death Knights, there were too many coincidences that couldn't be replicated involved in that. Hence, he might not be so lucky as to manage to do it again. Even the three powerful undead lords did not manage to summon a Death Knight in the undead army. Although the few legendary mages were exhibiting their own magical domains at the same time and using the rule power of the magical domains to create entities that could rival the Death Knights, when faced with the attacks of the Death Knights, any retaliation would seem weak and fragile like paper. The Death Knights were above level 15, and would usually grow up to level 17 or level 18. Under the leadership of the Retribution Knight, the Death Knights might not evolve but the attacks that the Death Knights displayed were definitely level 19 in power. The Angels of Light and Dark could still dish out some resistance against the Death Knights. However, Lin Li's power was only at level 21, hence, he could only produce a limited number of Angels of Light and Dark. If the battle with the three undead lords were considered the last tough battle in the Seven Realm Spiral, this one would be full of danger and terror. Although there was only one Retribution Knight, Rod Hart was the only one who could lead the hundreds of Death Knights. With the power of Holy Light, Linley led the forces of the Tower of Dusk and killed most of the Death Knights. As the strongest amongst them, Elder Randy naturally became the opponent of the Retribution Knight. With the help of Cheyenne and the three elves, especially Princess Elun, who had the Song of Heart, Elder Randy finally killed the Retribution Knight after sustaining various wounds during the intense battle. As the Retribution Knight got killed, the Death Knights that had made Linley look pathetic and disheveled suffered a drastic reduction in their strength. They suddenly became as meek as kittens. The infuriated Linley obviously wouldn't be willing to let go of such a great opportunity. The Angels of Light and Dark swarmed out and purified each of the Death Knights. When the last Death Knight vanished from this realm, everyone finally breathed a sigh of relief, but their faces were increasingly sullen. They were only at the sixth realm, yet they were already disheveled like that. What kind of formidable power would be lurking in the last realm of the seven realm spiral? There was no point in making any speculations, since they had already entered the seven realm spiral, they could only go on according to the rules of the seven realm spiral. The surrounding environment had begun to change, and they were all dog tired after the battle. They were all waiting anxiously for the last realm. At this moment, Linley could not help but feel even more tense. Even though he had obtained huge gains that others had never achieved in this Seven Realm Spiral, like an entry to level 22 and a massive amount of mana for the elemental WYRM Xiao Hua. These things could only be regarded as actual gains after he entered the Seven Realm Spiral. Otherwise, they would all just be illusory. Finally, the surroundings became fixed and they arrived at the last realm of the Seven Realm Spiral, which was also the key realm that determined their destiny. However, when they got a clearer look of everything around them, they could not help but be shocked, because the first thing they saw in the Seventh Realm was the four members of the Dark Blade who had first passed through the teleportation portal. Lansdale, the legendary bandit, indeed couldn't unlock the magical thousand contraption lock. Cheyenne felt a little ecstatic after a while. Although there were plenty of powerful guardians waiting to battle them in this last realm, he was still glad to see the Dark Blade in this troublesome situation too. Linley scrutinized the four members of the Dark Blade, but when he saw Stephen, he felt a little surprised. Before entering the teleportation portal, Stephen was only level 19, but the mana he was releasing now was actually at legendary level. Stephen and Hutton had always been the young geniuses of the Breezy Plains, a fact that Linley was well aware of. However, after experiencing various incidents in the Abyss of Tharlan together with him, he also gained some knowledge of Stephen's abilities. How could he have grown so tremendously from level 19 to the legendary realm? 
although Lindley was a little surprised, that was all he felt. After all, he might not be the only one who had lucky encounters. However, Lindley found Stephen's aura rather familiar, for it was different from the one he'd given off in the past, Stephen seemed to be a whole different person. While Lindley didn't have much of a reaction or expression on his face, Stephen behaved differently. After catching sight of Lindley and the rest who appeared suddenly, he focused all of his attention on Lindley, with no intention of hiding the hatred in his eyes. Stephen's resentment towards Lindley had never weakened, he had only hidden it throughout the journey because of his father's warning. At the same time, he also knew that his strength at that time was too weak to fight Lindley, and he would only be embarrassing himself by taking revenge without the help of his elders. However, there was no need for him to hide his emotions now. He thought, you must be surprised, eh? You probably didn't expect this. So what if you're in the legendary realm? I've had enough after tolerating this for so long. Now we're both legendary mages. There's no need for me to hide anymore. Stephen did not just show his infinite hatred for Linley. He also caused his mana to break out while exuding his formidable aura without reservations. At this moment, Linley frowned, and a mysterious look formed in his eyes. He finally knew the reason that Stephen's aura felt familiar. Isn't it the aura of the Lord of Souls? However, after arriving at the answer, Linley began to feel even more muddled up. Back in the Throne of Darkness, he had devised a plan to lure the Lord of Souls and used his sword to destroy the Lord of Souls into bits. He then used the summoning lamp to seal everything. But how could Stephen's aura be explained? Did he really obtain the Lord of Souls's power? However, a familiar voice sounded in Lin Li's mind at this time. Hey, is it me, or am I sensing that Mephisto's unlucky aura has appeared again? Kanoris said in disdain. Back then, he was the main accomplice in luring the Lord of Souls, hence, he had the right to show disdain for the stupid and foolish Lord of Souls. Lin Li smirked, and said, Do you still remember Stephen? Ha, huh, that idiot who thought he's so smart and wanted to benefit from Mephisto? He really doesn't know what death is. Canoris was full of contempt for Stephen, who worked with the Lord of Souls. It would always be stupid to cooperate with demons, and working with the Lord of Souls Mephistos was even more brainless. When signing a contract with a demon, one had to be careful of the countless traps in the contract. However, when it came to Mephistos, no amount of consideration would be enough, because the contract wouldn't work at all. While one had to fulfill the terms in the contract, the same rule didn't apply to Mephistos. Then you guessed wrong this time. Stephen has really gained some benefits from Mephistos, and he has now reached the legendary realm, Linley said casually. Linley was simply curious about the aura of the Lord of Souls that Stephen was giving off, and he was barely interested in Stephen's legendary realm powers. What? I guessed wrong? I'm the most noble soul trader. Even if the abyssal demons have all started believing in the doctrine of light, I would never guess wrong. Canoris in the hammer bobbed down a bit, showing his displeasure towards Linley for doubting him. Yes, you should be able to feel it too. Stephen is not only living well now, he has also reached the legendary realm. You saw it yourself. Mephisto's has already been turned into fragments and sealed. Having interacted with Canoris for such a long time, he obviously knew his habit of keeping others in suspense. Canoris wouldn't spill a word unless Linley agitated him. Indeed, Canoris expressed his disdain once again and humphed coldly. Humph, he may be alive now, but he might not be able to live for a long time. Although Mephisto's is silly, he still has the ability to plot against an idiot. I'm telling you, the aura that the idiot is giving off is that of the true blue Lord of Souls, and not the defect one. Linley couldn't help but be surprised when he heard Canoris' words. He frowned again, and asked, What do you mean? Are you saying that this Stephen is just another form of Mephisto's? Hey, I said it long ago. He's such an idiot, how could he have escaped Mephisto's scheming tricks? Judging from his current situation, I'm afraid Mephisto's has already left his seeds in Stephen's body. That guy Mephisto's would always have a backup plan. After we plotted against him in the Throne of Darkness, planting seeds in that idiot was his only way to survival and resurrection. 
Canoris was hoping that Linley would make a body for him, hence, he detested Linley's enemies. He seemed to be gloating over Stephen's situation. You mean, he's the host of the Lord of Souls, who has become his parasite. But there doesn't seem to be anything unusual about him, Linley asked Canoris in his mind while staring at Stephen. Canoris nodded, and had no choice, but to resignedly say, yes, a parasite. He's now a fusion of himself and Mephisto's. When Mephisto's really wakes up, he will become Mephisto's tonic and his body will become Mephisto's resurrected body. By then, there would be no Stephen, and only a complete Mephisto's, the Lord of Souls. Oh, I see. Linley shook his head and looked away smilingly. He even turned a blind eye to Stephen's near-naked body. What was there to hold against a dying man? Back in the abyss of Tharlan, he'd still been rather afraid of Mephisto's, but things were now different. Even if Mephisto's recovered the power that he had during his pinnacle, he still wouldn't pose a threat to Linley. Linley's current strength and abilities were worlds apart from what he had had when he'd been in the abyss of Tharlan. Not only had he reached level 21 of the legendary realm, he had also gained two legendary undead servants. Although Mephisto's was known as the Lord of Souls, he was just the loser in the battle for the throne in the abyss of Tharlan. He was in fact inferior to the demon Lord Marther in the Seven Realm Spiral. The Lord of Souls was able to catch Linley's interest only because it appeared at a strange time and place. After communicating with Canoris, Linley finally figured out the reason for the appearance of the Lord of Souls aura on Stephen, and realized that there was nothing worth paying attention to anymore. He looked away and began scanning his surroundings. The guardians of this realm had yet to appear even until now, and that was what he had to worry about. Mage Felic. What do you think of this last realm? asked Cheyenne who had snapped out of his trance and stopped staring at the dark blade. Stephen's sudden burst of aura made him worry a lot more. Although he had already seen through Stephen's magic, which contained some gnomological power, he hadn't expected Stephen to have made so much progress in such a short period of time. Cheyenne questioned Linley because he wanted to hide the uneasiness in his heart. However, Linley casually answered, This is the last realm. No matter how you look at it, we can't hide from the guardians here. The only thing we can do now is seize the time to prepare for the next attack. They were in the Seven Realm Spiral, and the only way to leave the place was to follow the rules in the realm and defeat the guardians of the Seven Realm Spiral. They were not in the outside world where they could escape and hide. In here, there was no way to avoid the battle with the guardians who would eventually find them even if they did not. Hence, all they could do now was to recover their power, and not find an exit. In fact, it wasn't necessary for Linley, to put it too explicitly, for they could all imagine that the High Elves wouldn't be so merciful as to leave any loopholes. Cheyenne and Linley's conversation was more of a way to show how close they were as allies than an exchange of opinions. However, Stephen never stopped looking at Linley, and all the anger in his chest seemed to have ignited at the instant that he heard Linley's words. In Stephen's eyes, Linley was just disregarding him by acting all nonchalant. Stephen would never forget the experiences that he had in the abyss of Tharlan. Linley was the reason he'd failed the test and lost the right of inheritance to Jeresco's three relics. He even had a close shave with death in the ancient arena. This hatred couldn't be dispelled just because he had survived. To Stephen, he'd managed to survive because it was God's will. You probably don't remember it. But back in the abyss of Tharlan, you said the same thing to me with the same nonchalance. Stephen took a step forward and glowered at Linley hysterically, with infinite resentment in his tone. But what happened in the end? I listened to you and helped you pass the ancient arena, but what did I get in the end? You abandoned me in the ancient arena and made me face the attacks of all the magical beasts. As Stephen spoke, the scene that once had made him feel hopeless popped up in his mind. His expression would turn more hysterical with every word he said. Stephen's resentment towards Linley was not simply because of the time that he'd got duped and set up by Linley. It was the various incidents that caused his hatred to build up. Due to the fact that he'd been trapped in the ancient arena, he'd been disqualified from receiving Jeresco's relics. After leaving, he'd wanted to ask his father and elders to help him take revenge on Linley, but the latter had already become a legendary figure. 
hence, he was in no place to take revenge at all. He had no choice but to follow his father's warning and bear with it. If he were still the insignificant archmage he used to be, all he could do would have been to bear with it and possibly have no chance at taking revenge at all. Stephen's voice became more and more domineering, and the resentment in his eyes was drowned out by his hysteria. You didn't expect this, did you? After you abandoned me there, I didn't die as you wished. Not only did I survive, I even obtained a great opportunity. So what if you're in the legendary realm? If it weren't for Jurasco's relics, do you really think you'd have your current power? Look at me, I managed to gain so much power even without Jurasco's relics. You definitely didn't expect this. Although Stephen had previously expected to enter the legendary realm with the huge opportunity he'd obtained, he hadn't expected that this day would have come so fast. It had only been a short period of time, yet he had already become a legendary mage. Everything felt miraculous and amazing. The best part was that his enemy sent himself to him right after he became a legendary powerhouse. Stephen's maniacal behavior had also caught the attention of the others. Apart from feeling disdain towards the begrudging characters of humans, the several elves did not take it too seriously. As Stephen's father, Borg naturally cared more about his son, so he wanted to persuade him to stop. However, the legendary bandit Lansdale grabbed Borg to stop him. Shaking his head slightly, he said, this hatred has been accumulated within Stephen for a long time. It is also a good thing to let him vent it all out. Otherwise, it'd be difficult for him to progress. He's already a legendary mage now. With the three of us to look after him, there won't be any danger. Borg stopped in his tracks. As a legendary mage who had been in the legendary realm for plenty of years, he naturally knew how greatly a grudge would affect enlightenment. As Lansdale said, Stephen had already become a legendary mage, just like Linley. If a conflict were to really occur, the three legendary powerhouses would be able to help Stephen out too. Although Stephen had attracted the attention of everyone on site, Linley, his real enemy, was not included among them. Linley's contempt and disdain were really unbearable to Stephen because he felt disregarded. When I was an archmage, you were already a legendary mage. In that case, there was nothing I could do about your ignoring my existence. But now, I am also a legendary mage, and I have the heritage of the Lord of Souls. Who are you to put yourself on a pedestal and look down on me? Stephen raised his staff in anger. Although Stephen could sense that his emotions were slipping out of control, he believed that it would be impossible for anyone to remain calm when facing their enemy who'd caused them a great deal of harm. Linley was his very nemesis. If it weren't because of his appearance, Hutton wouldn't have been his match at all, and Jurasco's three relics would have become his. Had it not been for Linley's plots, Stephen wouldn't have been on the brink of death in the abyss of Tharlan. Linley was the cause of everything, and now that Stephen had become a legendary figure with the inheritance of the Lord of Souls, he felt that it was time to get back what was supposed to belong to him. I will burn your soul with the flames of hell, and let your soul mourn in endless pain. You were the one who asked for this. Stephen's face twisted in a ruthless smile as if he had already seen Linley's soul being destroyed with his own eyes. Stephen suddenly pointed his staff at Linley without casting my spells or making any gestures. In Linley's eyes, Stephen was actually no different from a dead man. Mephisto's was not to be taken advantage of easily. When Mephisto's was completely reborn and took over Stephen's soul, Stephen would no longer exist. Hence, Linley really did not want to waste any time or energy on someone who was destined to die. As long as the reborn Mephistos obediently went back to the abyss of Tharlan, Linley wouldn't bother with him. Anyway, he already had the throne of darkness, and might not go to the abyss of Tharlan again. However, if someone insisted on courting death, Linley would definitely not stand on ceremony with him. Die. Redeem yourself with your soul. Stephen growled, and a ray of light emerged from the jewel on the top of the staff. Along the way, everyone had been paying attention to the abilities of others, and Stephen naturally hadn't given up on observing Linley's abilities. They faced various battles with the magical beasts before entering the dragon cave, followed by the siege of the green dragons just outside the cave. To Stephen, 
Linley was only a legendary mage in name and was only relying on his competent undead servants. Stephen felt that he was different as he possessed the power of the Lord of Souls, which was unrivaled. Stephen was no longer the same gullible and manipulatable Stephen back in the abyss of Farlan. Stephen had absolute confidence in his own power, especially after entering the legendary realm and mastering the laws of soul, a formidable power that allowed him to manipulate everything on earth. It was far from ordinary elemental power. As the dazzling light erupted from the gem on the top of the staff, everything around it suddenly lost their luster as if that ray of light was the only existence in the entire space. The instant that it was shot, hundreds of blue light arrows darted out together with some strange mana, and continuously switched around like an illusion. Staring at the hundreds of light arrows and sensing the changes in power, everyone couldn't help but be shocked. They were all legendary figures, but not all of them had experienced spiritual magic before. However, they were no strangers to the troublesome soul arrows. Although the soul arrows were presented in the form of light arrows, they could actually exist in another illusory space. No magical shield could defend against the soul arrow, regardless of how strong it might be, because its target was the human soul, and not the body. Spiritual magic could be said to be the strangest kind of magic in the world. Although it might not have the power to destroy the world, its attacks often caught others off guard, and could be invincible too. In fact, it was tougher to deal with than necromagic. However, in Anril, there were very few who learned spiritual magic, not because it wasn't strong enough, but because not everyone was suited for learning it. Only those who had some kind of mutation in their soul could learn to use it. Even the other two leaders of the Dark Blade were extremely surprised by Stephen's usage of spiritual magic. When the soul arrows appeared, only two people remained calm. As Stephen's father, Borg had already heard about Stephen's encounters in the Abyss of Tharlan. After getting to know that his son had inherited the Lord of Souls heritage, he was not surprised by the fact that he could use spiritual magic. In the face of the attack of the soul arrows, Linley knew that it was the power of the Lord of Souls, and not Stephen's. At the moment before Stephen attacked, Linley clearly sensed that Stephen's aura had changed completely, and was now similar to that of the Lord of Souls, Mephisto's. Although Mephisto's had yet to swallow Stephen's soul, Stephen could very likely be attacking with the help of Mephisto's. Mephisto's detested Linley even more than Stephen did. As the Lord of the Abyss, He'd actually got duped and set up by a lowly human who ruined everything that he had painstakingly built up for tens of thousands of years. Not only did he not get his throne back, he even got ripped into bits. It was a complete insult to him. Hence, Mephisto's used his full strength and power from the beginning of the attack in a bid to kill Linley instantly. Of course, venting his anger and resentment was just one of his purposes. More importantly, Mephisto's wanted to get back the soul fragments that Linley had sealed back then. Although Mephisto's was now being reborn vicariously in Stephen's body, there would be a huge increase in his powers if he could obtain the soul fragments again. The soul arrows were only the beginning. At the same time that the soul arrows were fired, Mephisto's soul-devouring domain was also unfolded instantly by Stephen, and he trapped Linley in the domain. As the soul-devouring domain unfolded, everything that was trapped in the space began wailing in despair. It included the souls that had been devoured by the Lord of Souls through the soul-devouring domain in the past tens of thousands of years. Overwhelmed with endless agony, they shrieked loudly in pain. Just like the soul arrows, human souls were still the target of the soul-devouring domain. No matter how strong the human body might be, even the strongest in the legendary realm might not be able to escape the fate of being destroyed by the soul-devouring domain. A slight mistake or carelessness would result in one's soul being devoured by the terrifying soul-devouring domain, becoming one of the wailing souls. Even the people outside the soul-devouring domain could not help but put on a sullen expression at this moment. The shrieks and cries for help that came from the soul-devouring domain were not aimed at them, but they could still feel their souls shaking. None of them expected that the young Stephen Borg brought along would exhibit such a terrifying power at this moment. However, that was not the end of it. When the soul-devouring domain was unleashed, Stephen and Mephisto's also showcased their strongest power, the extraordinary soul storm. 
In the sky of the soul-devouring domain, dark clouds were ignited instantly, and blue soul fire lit up the entire sky, overwhelming it with flames. Hysterical laughter continuously sounded from Stephen as his body was completely engulfed by soul fire. Under his feet, the flames spread towards the surroundings rapidly, and the wailing became even more melancholic at this moment. The voices were filled with pain, anger, and despair. Their negative emotions seemed to strike directly into everyone's souls. In the burning sky, the soul fire burned continuously and formed a huge vortex. Countless blue electric snakes leaped and descended from the sky together to form a pillar of lightning that connected heaven and earth. Under the traction of the vortex, the pillar continuously rotated and moved, making the entire space seem like a thunder cage. Back in the throne of darkness, the Lord of Souls Mephistos had once used the soul storm in a bid to devour the Lord of Darkness effortlessly. Although the power of the Lord of Darkness had weakened greatly back then, the throne of darkness was a magical domain created by the Dragon of Destruction. Under the suppression of the throne of darkness, the soul storm became much weaker. Besides, Mephistos had just reassembled his body, and had yet to recover the strength that it had possessed during its pinnacle. Hence, it got destroyed by the Lord of Darkness. However, things were now different. Without the suppression of the Throne of Darkness, Mephisto's power had been greatly restored ever since he'd fused himself with Stephen's body. Hence, the Soul Storm now was more powerful than it had been at first. Even if the Lord of Darkness appeared, it might not escape the fate of having its soul get devoured. While laughing hysterically, Stephen manipulated the soul storm that seemed to be devouring the whole world. It then swept quickly towards Linley, following the arrows. Stephen seemed to have shot the soul arrows, unfolded the soul-devouring domain, and put up the soul storm all in the blink of an eye. Although Stephen was disdainful of Linley because he had the inheritance of the Lord of Souls, he still chose to exert his full power because he wanted to render Linley helpless and see him being at his wit's end. He wanted to show everyone who the true genius was. Although Stephen had just stepped into the legendary realm and he was facing a level 21 legendary mage, Elder Randy was already certain of the outcome. The special qualities of the spiritual magic and the combination of soul-devouring domain and the soul storm was beyond what a level 21 legendary mage could handle. He reckoned that Lin Li's chances of surviving were bleak. However, although Lin Li's defeat was foreseen by him, Elder Randy nonetheless placed his hands behind his back to observe everything that was taking place in the soul-devouring domain without any intention to stop it. Although Linley had once given Princess Elune and the other elves an antidote for the poison that they were infected with, it was just a transaction, and Elder Randy wouldn't bear a grudge just because he had been embarrassed. Although he felt the pinch of losing the star-scarred robe, that was not a reason for him to leave Linley in the lurch. As the eighth elder of the Emerald Council of the Elven Kingdom, all decisions made by Elder Randy had to be made in the best interests of the elves. Even if Linley had really done them a great favor, Elder Randy wouldn't take action at this juncture. Elder Randy was well aware of the relationship between the Dark Blade and the Malfa family, as well as the important role that Linley played amongst them. Linley was inclined towards the Malfa family, and that was a fact that everyone could see. Perhaps before this, Linley was not completely on the Malfa family's side, but ever since Stephen launched an attack, the Dark Blade became Linley's and the Malfa family's common enemy. Elder Randy knew that Linley was not a generous person. If he were to leave the Haiga mountain range alive, he would inevitably retaliate against the Dark Blade together with the Malfa family. However, the Dark Blade had always been cooperating with the elves, and Elder Randy definitely didn't want war to happen because it had caused considerable damage to the elves' interests. From the moment the soul storm appeared, everyone was shocked by the power exhibited by Stephen, especially the perplexed and worried Cheyenne, who was an old rival of the Dark Blade. The conflict between the Malfa family and Dark Blade was an old feud that had built up across the years, and couldn't be resolved, because it concerned the development of both sides. The Malfa family had always been passive in the feud, but the pressure that the three legendary leaders of the Dark Blade had brought Cheyenne, the only pillar of support of the Malfa family, was far beyond imaginable. Cheyenne had once pinned his hopes on Hutton, hoping that his proud disciple could step into the legendary realm sooner and let the Malfa family become stronger. 
however, the fourth legendary member of the Dark Blade surfaced before his hopes had been fulfilled. More incredibly, the power of that Stephen had exhibited was not like that of a novice to the legendary realm. The soul laws were clearly beyond the limits of a beginner in the legendary realm. The release of the soul storm did not stop at all, and he executed his attacks with so much finesse that it seemed to be a natural gift. Cheyenne wanted to help Linley, but the three legendary powerhouses of the Dark Blade were staring at him intimidatingly, leaving him with no chance to do so at all. Of those present, the only one who could stop Stephen was probably Elder Randy. He was the best candidate, be it because of his strong powers or his relationship with the Dark Blade. However, Cheyenne turned to look at the elves, only to be disappointed because Elder Randy did not seem to have the intention of stopping them. Indeed, the elves had always been in cooperation with the Dark Blade, and they would undoubtedly stand on the latter's side in such circumstances. How could they help Linley? However, Cheyenne's speculation was not definite. The elves had learned a lot from humans, with the most important being balance. Elder Randy knew that the continued conflict between the Malfa family and the Dark Blade would be the most advantageous for the elves. Although neither of the huge forces posed a threat to the elves, it would affect the dominance of the elves in future. From this point of view, it seemed that Elder Randy ought to intervene. After all, in the current situation, there were four legendary powerhouses from the Dark Blade which were now stronger than the Malfa family. However, after interacting with Linley, Elder Randy knew that he was definitely not a person who could be controlled easily. Instead of allowing Linley to play the role of balancing the Dark Blade and the Malfa family, he decided that it would be better to let him die and let the elves be the ones to provide the balance. At this very moment, the hundreds of soul arrows and the soul storm were extremely close to Linley in the soul devouring domain. It was as if Linley would be completely engulfed in the next instant. Stephen had even stopped laughing and was waiting to hear Linley's shrieks. Be it to Stephen or Mephisto's, that would be the most wonderful enjoyment in the world. However, Linley suddenly shot out the light and darkness domain, which was only black and white. The continuous collision of black shadow and white light merged into countless angels of light and dark who flapped their black and white wings while flying around Linley. As the angels of light and dark flew around, the light and darkness domain continuously expanded within the soul-devouring domain. The souls which had been devoured and tortured by the black flames of the abyss of Tharlan suddenly stopped wailing, and began heaving sighs of relief under the purification of white light. The hundreds of soul arrows disappeared at the instant that the light and darkness domain was induced, just like ashes falling into water without even the slightest ripple. The sudden change surprised everyone and the weird soul arrows disappeared so silently. The light and darkness domain was beyond the imagination of all, even though they knew that it was the nomological power of light and darkness. However, that was the reason for their disbelief. Linley had once used the light and darkness domain in front of everyone when battling the green dragons, but no one could notice the existence of the light and darkness rules under the facade of the frost domain. Despite having scoured through the Seven Realm Spiral and battled the Undead Lord and the Retribution Knight together, they could only subtly feel some light rules in Lin Li's Frost Domain. However, no one expected that Lin Li's mastery of the light and darkness rules was already enough for him to create his own magical domain. In this black and white magical domain, the contrasting rules actually fused together perfectly without seeming to conflicting at all. What kind of mastery did he have to possess in order to do that? Even Elder Randy could not hide his astonishment at all. It was not unusual to master the rules of light and darkness. Almost all the popes of the Brilliant Shrine had their own light domain, while the Darkness Shrine, too, had masters of darkness domain. However, only a true master who had gained deep insight into the two domains could control the light and darkness domain, which was a fusion of the two. Of course, Elder Randy wouldn't know that Linley managed to create the light and darkness domain because he mainly relied on the debris of the stars, holy light and gloomy dark. Regardless of what others thought, Linley would not easily let go of those who wanted to kill him, be it the dying Stephen or Mephistos who was about to be reborn. With the expansion of the light and darkness domain, countless angels of light and dark flew around the sky, and even Stephen's soul storm could only slow down, 
Just as everyone was speculating and making guesses about how Lenly had managed to create his light and darkness domain, the angels of light and dark who were flying in the sky suddenly broke apart and became the energy of light and darkness. Could it be too weak to persist? Cheyenne once again began to feel worried, despite feeling surprised earlier on. Light and darkness were two diametrically opposed rule forces, or rather two conflicting rules. Yet, they were fused together to create a magical domain. The idea itself was already beyond what anyone could imagine. The three legendary powerhouses of the Dark Blade and even Elder Randy could not help but heave a sigh of relief when they saw the Angels of Light and Dark disintegrating. However, after the Angels of Light and Dark disintegrated, the Light and Darkness domain did not disintegrate. The countless rays of black and white lights merged in the sky while revolving in a frenzy. Eventually, they fused into a giant black and white sword. The giant sword hung in the sky while the rays of black and white continued to merge with it, causing it to elongate and expand rapidly, and making the humans feel tiny in comparison. Linley pursed his lips and looked in front with a stern and menacing expression. He then raised the helio scepter in the air, and the giant black and white sword in the sky darted forward together with Linley's movements. Boom! One strike of the sword was all it took to shatter the soul storm which contained all of the power of the Lord of Souls, and countless souls were purified by the light contained in the sword. However, that was not the end. The giant black and white sword did not slow down at all. After cutting off the soul storm, it slammed down into the soul-devouring domain again. In the soul-devouring domain, the countless souls that could not stop wailing suddenly let out a shrill shriek before falling silent again. Rays of light rose above in the soul-devouring domain, which were the souls that had been purified by holy light. Although purification would cause them to vanish, it was a form of relief for them after being tortured by the black flames for so many years. Almost all of the souls that had been accumulated for tens of thousands of years were purified by the sword while the soul-devouring domain collapsed. Although the Lord of Souls Mephistos could escape this ordeal, the soul-devouring domain could barely reach its power. Ever since Stephen had launched an attack and Lindley retaliated, only a few moments passed. However, to the surrounding spectators who had been on an emotional roller coaster, it felt like an eternity. No one could hide the shock that they were feeling, for Lin Li's abilities had already exceeded their imagination. He was only a legendary mage as well, but he managed to split the daunting soul storm apart with just one blow. He even shattered Stephen's soul devouring domain. Was this really done by a legendary mage? Stephen had already fallen to the ground with the collapse of the domain. Although he could still exude a weak aura, everyone knew that he was already on the brink of death. Any legendary mage would be subject to the recoil of rule power during the shattering of a magical domain. Those who were lucky enough to survive would end up becoming vegetables that would never get to practice magic again. There was an unbelievable surprise in Cheyenne's eyes, and he couldn't help but be glad that he had trusted the right person. It seemed that he had to get closer to Linley and forge stronger ties between the Malfa family and the Tower of Dusk after they returned. Cheyenne began to contemplate letting Hutton join the Tower of Dusk and learn alongside the young mage Felic, who might help him step into the legendary realm. Unlike Cheyenne, the three legendary powerhouses of the Dark Blade were full of disbelief. The fusion of light and darkness was already beyond what they could comprehend, and the powerful strike that Linley launched on Stephen was absolutely intimidating. Elder Randy took a deep breath and stared at the young human mage with complicated emotions. He reckoned that even the best prodigy of the elven race could not compare to this human. He could not decide between befriending Linley or killing him before he grew completely. Elder Randy had always been confident that killing the human mage Linley would be an easy task. However, after seeing that giant black and white sword's destructive power, Elder Randy could not help but begin doubting himself. Elder Randy had a feeling that the sword that had destroyed the soul-devouring domain would be immune to the damage he inflicted, even if he transformed into a silver dragon. Judging from Lin Li's current appearance, he reckoned that that strike was definitely not all that Lin Li could do. No one knew what other secrets he was hiding. He has a level 21 vampire and a level 20 lich as his servants, 
as well as two legendary humorous WYRMS. This human actually has such a powerful force around him. He has always had them, but I've never regarded them seriously. If I were to really launch an attack on him, I might be able to kill them all with the help of the Dark Blade, but I'll definitely suffer a huge loss too. By then, it might be hard to pass through the Seventh Realm. Elder Randy thought to himself in shock not far behind Linley. Just as almost everyone was secretly weighing the pros and cons, Linley suddenly smirked after putting away his light and darkness domain. Without any warning, countless hell vines emerged from below Linley's feet and instantly covered the hundreds of square meters of land around Linley. Everyone couldn't help but be shocked and puzzled with the sudden appearance of the hell vines. However, they soon noticed a blurry figure being dragged out of nothingness by the hell vines. The figure was none other than the legendary bandit Lansdale, who was also one of the three legendary powerhouses of the Dark Blade. Linley would deserve to die if he still launched an attack without taking any precautions, despite knowing that the other party had a legendary bandit on their side. Linley had always treasured his life, hence, he would definitely take precautionary measures against any potential threats. Thus, he had already used magic to create a seed of hell vines beneath his feet. The hell vines were arguably one of the best ways to guard against assassins. It took only a touch of magic to sprout from the ground and grow rapidly to wrap itself around any intruder who invaded its vicinity. Even if the opponent concealed himself, he wouldn't be able to escape the sharp senses of the hell vines. Once they tangled themselves around the intruder, they'd immediately absorb a large amount of vitality and inject deadly toxins into the intruder's body. However, Lansdale was worthy of being a legendary bandit. Although he was caught by the hell vines, he didn't panic at all. He suddenly spun his danger and radiated countless rays of reflected light to shield himself. A blue light flashed and a sweet scent of poison covered the dagger, after which the hundreds of hell vines wrapped around him were cut in the blink of an eye. Before the other hell vines could entangle him, Lansdale suddenly disappeared. The next time he appeared, he was already far away from the vines. However, at this very moment, Lansdale's face grew sullen just as he was about to scrutinize his surroundings. All of a sudden, a dazzling ray of light appeared in the sky, looking like an aurora and a rainbow. No one could describe the splendor of this ray of light as it flashed across the sky as if lightning struck. Shortly after, the world suddenly fell silent. Lansdale stood amongst a bunch of vines with the dagger in his hand, which was emitting a faint blue light. Since the thickest and toughest vines had been cut away, Lansdale would be able to get out of the vines with just a gentle slit of the dagger and begin attacking Linley with the dominance of a thunderbolt. However, it became Lansdale's eternal regret. Ever since then, he never had the chance to wield the dagger again. After the ray of amazing light shone through, a huge hole appeared in the middle of Lansdale's chest. The flesh around it was scorched and charred as if he had been struck by lightning. Lansdale was definitely dead. Even if Pope Rosario arrived in person, he would have no choice but to shake his head and sing a hymn as a rite of passage for Lansdale. Staring at Lansdale, who was still standing among the vines, all of them suddenly felt a cold chill down their spines as they could not contain the horror of it all. Everyone had seen clearly that the brilliant ray of light that killed Lansdale was actually an arrow shot from the sky, though it was more absurd than what they could accept. There were three legendary leaders in the Dark Blade, the legendary mage Borg, the sword sage Baldella, and the legendary bandit Lansdale. Although Lansdale was not the strongest, he was not to be trifled with, and even Elder Randy had to be wary of him. As a legendary bandit, Lansdale would definitely be vigilant even though he was adept at assassinating his enemies. While he did not have his own magical domain like legendary mages did, everything around him could be considered his domain since he had sharp senses. Even the slightest changes would not go unnoticed by him. No one would be able to assassinate him even when he was sleeping. However, when faced with that brilliant light in the sky, Lansdale got his heart pierced in a single blow, before he could even attempt to evade. Shock was written all over his face, and even during his last moments, he still couldn't believe that he would die because of an arrow. The arrow that killed Lansdale, by striking him in his chest had long disappeared, and no one even saw what the arrow looked like. 
however, the power of the arrow was deeply etched in everyone's minds and became an unforgettable memory. Elves were famous for their impressive archery. Not only did they have a large number of elite archers, they also had archers of the sanctuary realm like Wind Whisperer Hull. Even the elves who did not specialize in archery were mostly great archers too. In Amrel, the elves were considered the best in archery. Apart from the legendary archer Gilder and Princess Elune who had the Song of Heart, Elder Randy was the only one amongst the elves who appeared here who had personally witnessed Wind Whisperer Hull's brilliance. Hull had managed to kill the King of Leaden Kingdom with a single arrow that darted across thousands of miles. That arrow could be said to reach the limit of a bow and arrow in the opinion of the elves and possibly everyone else of Amrel. However, the arrow that struck Lansdale had completely thwarted the people's understanding of archery, giving them an eye-opener. No one knew exactly where the arrow had come from, and only knew that it seemed to have struck Lansdale menacingly and swiftly like lightning and thunder with explosive legendary power. No one doubted it at all, and they all thought that it had already exceeded the limits of archery. Even Wind Whisperer Hull might not launch such a horrifying strike with the Song of Heart. Almost everyone had the same idea in mind. If the arrow was shot at them instead, would they be able to escape? However, that was also the reason for their dejection, because they were certain that they wouldn't be able to dodge it. Even if they were expecting it, they wouldn't know how to avoid it. Shock was written all over their faces, and they couldn't hide it at all. Lansdale's death had taken them aback greatly. Only Linley, who had just ended the battle with Stephen, managed to stay calm, with no fear or terror on his face. There was only a slight tinge of worry in his eyes. After a while, the arrow was nowhere in sight, and everyone gradually calmed down. In fact, after giving it some thought, they realized that there was no point in worrying, since even the legendary bandit Lansdale could not escape the arrow, let alone themselves. They felt that there was no need to make themselves nervous if there was no way they could escape anyway. They decided to put Lansdale's death and the arrow aside for a while, because they would never be able to figure it out regardless of the amount of effort they put in. Now, the only thing that was worth their attention was the battle between Linley and Stephen just now. After that battle, there were also slight changes in the power dynamics of cooperation between the four forces that had delved into the Seven Realm Spiral. Amongst the four, the elves had always undoubtedly been the strongest, followed by the Dark Blade, which had three legendary leaders. Not to mention, Stephen had just entered the legendary realm too. To the elves and the Dark Blade, the Tower of Dusk and the Malfa family were both insignificant, regardless of which one of them was stronger, or even if the two joined forces. However, Stephen, who had just been promoted to the legendary realm, was now seriously injured and dying after the intense battle with Linley, while the fearsome Lansdale died because of a mysterious arrow. In the blink of an eye, the Dark Blade's power was reduced by half, with the sword sage Baldella and the legendary mage Borg being the only ones left. Before this battle, people would have probably thought that Linley wouldn't be able to defeat the Dark Blade even if he had the help of Cheyenne. However, after what they had just witnessed, they realized that there was more to Linley's abilities and powers than what meets the eye. In the face of the situation which everyone believed would result in casualties, the giant black and white sword managed to destroy the soul-devouring domain effortlessly and cause the trapped souls to disperse, while Stephen was dying from his severe injuries. The power of Lin Li's effortless attack took everyone by storm, and shocked them even more greatly than the sharp arrow that shot Lansdale did. Among the crowd, Elder Randy was undoubtedly the most powerful, but when he saw the power of Lin Li's attack, even he couldn't help but be stunned. Defeating Stephen was nothing for it was a feat that could probably be achieved by Elder Randy and the other legendary figures too. After all, Stephen had just entered the legendary realm. Even though he used the tough-to-handle spiritual magic, the elven magic was excellent too. Elder Randy was a level 23 wild druid who could not be equaled even if he didn't use his ability to transform into a dragon. When in the form of a silver dragon, his strength would be greatly improved, and he would definitely kill Stephen easily if he were to be a little more ruthless. However, Elder Randy had to admit that even with his own powerful abilities, he might not be able to achieve that result with the same ease as Linley. After all, battles in the legendary realm, especially between legendary mages, 
were more than just a competition of who was more powerful. The outcome was usually decided through the collision and battle between domains. Elder Randy himself was a wild druid, but he had witnessed plenty of battles between legendary mages. However, he could not name a legendary mage who could destroy his opponent in a way that was as arrogant and tyrannical as Lin Lee's. Had he not felt the clear fluctuations in mana from both sides, Elder Randy would have even thought that it was just a legendary mage bullying an archmage, and not a battle between legendary mages. The gap between their strengths had far exceeded his imagination. The outcome was decided in the blink of an eye, something that no one could imagine. The strength shown by Linley made everyone secretly startled. Everyone had thoughts of their own, but their sentiments were almost similar. They had no choice but to see the young legendary mage Linley as well as the Tower of Dusk, which they had heard of, but never seen in a different light now. When Linley had taught Jacques a lesson, the only reason the elves had been shocked was because Linley actually had had the audacity to harm the elves. When besieged by the green dragons, Linley had first broken the standstill with the help of his vampire servant Norfeller. The people were also surprised, but only because Linley was ruthless and Norfeller's performance miraculous. When the green dragon king appeared and sent everyone into despair, the baby elemental WYRM Xiao Hua appeared to make the Green Dragon King and his Green Dragons leave. Back then, people were shocked because of how peculiar of a pet Xiao Hua was, and not because of Lin Li's abilities. Along the way in the Seven Realm Spiral, they had experienced fierce battles, but they found nothing special about Lin Li's performance. However, in hindsight, they realized that there was definitely another reason apart from his undead servants that Lin Li, a legendary mage who had just been promoted to level 21, could battle the skeletal lord and defeat the death knights. They could sense the gnomological power of light and darkness from the light and darkness domain that Linley unfolded earlier on, especially the giant black and white sword that was formed later. Obviously, Linley was not useless in intense battles, and simply had not been giving his all. As the prestigious eighth elder of the Emerald Council, Elder Randy also had great strength, but at this juncture, he had no choice but to take Linley seriously. Anyone could tell that Linley had yet to showcase all of his power, and none of them knew what his limits were. In fact, some even suspected that he had used some special method to hide his magical wave. There was silence all around, and everyone was secretly trying to digest everything that happened and recover from the shock that Linley had given them. However, at this very moment, a powerful mana wave burst out all of a sudden and snapped everyone back to reality. The powerful mana wave did not come from the enemies in the Seven Realm Spiral, or rather, not the enemy of everyone. The mana came right from the legendary mage of the Dark Blade, Borg, who was also the severely wounded Stephen's father. The legendary sword Sage Baldella also followed Borg while exuding a strong combat energy. Linley frowned slightly, and the two undead servants behind him immediately came to his side. Due to the fact that Stephen had attacked, the relationship between Linley and the Dark Blade had truly become a hostile one, and Lansdale's assassination attempt on Linley had caused the animosity to form for good. It seems that a battle with these two legendary powerhouses is inevitable, Linley thought as he held on to the Helios Scepter. Although he was about to face two long established legendary powerhouses, there wasn't the slightest tinge of fear or terror on his face at all. All of a sudden, Linley, who had been waiting for a while, felt that there was someone else beside him. He turned around to see that it was none other than the legendary mage Cheyenne. Cheyenne smiled slightly without uttering a single word, for he had already allowed his actions to show his decision to stand on Linley's side. Looking at the tense situation, which seemed to foreshadow a massive battle, Elder Randy opened his mouth but didn't say anything to dissuade them. Instead, he just shook his head gently. Although the elves had always been dominant in the cooperation with the Dark Blade, Elder Randy had no reason to speak. Borg, who had surging mana waves around him, did not attack Linley immediately, and instead suppressed his complicated emotions. Lowering his voice, he said, Mage Felic, I didn't expect to have belittled you even after interacting with you for such a long time. Your strength is really greater than what you show on the surface. Stephen has already been punished for attacking you. I hope you can give him to me, 
and the dark blade will retreat and back out of this operation. Borg's request was truly unexpected to everyone, but after giving it some thought, they all realized that it was indeed the best choice for the dark blade. There was already no turning back nor a chance of improving the hostile relationship between the dark blade and Lindley. The elves were obviously going to stay out of it and leave them in the lurch too. If it were to go on, none of them knew what might happen. However, it was indeed admirable of Borg to make such a decision when Stephen was on the brink of death. Thank you for watching Mystic Realms Recap. Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.